So in this video, I want to show you two more problems that we can formulate as ILPs, classical algorithmic problems. If you don't know yet what an ILP is, make sure to watch that video first. The problem we're going to look at is shortest path and TSP. And at the end, I will also say a little bit about techniques to solve ILPs. So the shortest path problem, we have given a directed graph with edge rates. And we're lock looking for the shortest path from a vertex S to a vertex T. So here's my S, here's my T. How can I model this as an ILP? So we can model it, and there are different ILPs for this. So what would be a natural choice of variables, so objects that we might want to select? So on a path, we will select edges, so it's natural to have variables for each edge. Yeah, so we will have variables for every edge, u, v. And those will tell us whether we're going to use that edge or not. So now how does a ILP look, at, look like overall? So the objective function is easy. We're going to sum up the weights of the edges that we actually selected. And now we have to somehow model that we actually have a pass from S to T and we can do that in the following way. So for a pass, what we want to have is that if I go into an edge, into a vertex, I will also want to go out of the vertex and vice versa. If I go out of the vertex, I should also go in. So incoming edges should be the same as outgoing edges and that number ideally should be one. Um, and T should have one incoming edge. Likewise, one could say S should have an outgoing one, but that is an equivalent. So let me just show you, you this uh, overall. So we want to minimize the sum of uh, the edges selected, and not the edges selected as such, but their weights. So weight times x u v. And so let's start with this one. If I look at the edges going into T, exactly one should be selected. So the sum of the x u t's should be one. So I have one edge going into t. And then for every other vertex, what I want to have is that incoming number of incoming edges equals number of outgoing edges. And in that way, I can kind of propagate backwards. And I only asked for this for all vertices except s and t. So this one edge that goes into T, it will have to, at the vertex where it comes from, also have an ingoing edge. And from there, again, ingoing edge and so on. And I can stop only if at some point I am at S. So this is an integer linear program for shortest path. The LP relaxation of this problem has a zero one solution. So like in the example of minimum weight perfect matching, if we have the LP relaxation from that, we can reconstruct the shortest path. I want to show you a second ILP or actually an LP formulation for shortest path, and that works as follows. For every vertex, I have a variable, and what I want uh, this variable to be is the distance from S to that vertex. To achieve this, we will have the following constraints for this vertex dv. We will have constraints for every edge going into v so that dv is smaller or equal d of u plus w u comma v. So the idea here is the following. So in principle, what we would like to have is that d of v is the minimum of all of these values. But minimum is not a linear constraint so that we cannot do we can only do smaller equal so if we would now be able to pick d of v subject to these constraints as large as possible then we would actually get the right value namely then we would get the minimum how do we force d of v to be as large as possible we simply use maximization so we now maximize gt subject to these constraints so here now we have d of u on the other side so we have d of v minus d of u small equal the weight with this we always make sure that we be stay below that minimum and the max pulls it up to actually 
fulfilling this minimum constraints always uh, exactly. So then the solution to this actually gives us the distance to t. And of course, we should start with a distance of zero for s to itself. Yeah, so again, why do we maximize? We maximize because if we wouldn't be maximizing, then simply setting everything to zero would work. And the reason why we have this combination of small equal here and maximum is because this allows us to simulate a minimum that we would actually want to have when formulating this problem. So the second problem we're going to look at is the traveling salesperson problem, TSP for short. We have an undirected complete graph with edge rates and we want to find the shortest Hamiltonian circuit. So can we formulate this as an ILP? I mean, of course, otherwise I wouldn't be talking about it, but how? So the variables that we're going to use are the following. So for every pair of cities, i and j, we are going to have a variable xij, which tells me that uh, after visiting city i, the next city that I'm going to visit is city j. And if that is what we have, then at least the objective function is simple because we're going to sum up over all of those xij's and then the weight of the corresponding edge. So if I pick an edge, meaning that xij is 1, then I get the weight, otherwise I don't get it. And then I will want to have at least the following constraints. So for any fixed i, so if i am in city i, i obviously the next city should be exactly one city. So summing up for a given i over all j xij, that should be one. Also, from the perspective of our city j, j should be the next city only for one city. So also for a fixed j, the sum over all i xij should be one. So does this correctly model the TSP? Unfortunately, this is not the case because we can still get a, a solution to this, which is not actually a true. So let me give you an example. So let's say I have these cities. Then of course, I would like to have a tour that goes through all cities, but I could have a solution which visits those four, four cities and those four cities. And then the constraints would be still fulfilled because for every city, I once go into it and I leave it once. Yeah, so I could have several cycles. So how can we avoid this? So are we going to see two ways of avoiding this? The first one is the following. We essentially have variables which tell us the position of the city J on the tour. So we're going to number them 1 to n. And then what we're going to ask for is that if coming from UGI, the next city should have a larger value here. So in the order, it come, should come later. Because if you now look at how does this avoid our initial problem. So if we would have two cycles, and I would try to now number them one, two, three, four. Then from four, I would go be going back to one. And I would only allow myself to go back to one from n. So this would not be possible if we can achieve this condition. So, but how can we encode this as a linear constraint? We can do this in the following way. So we're going to say that uj plus n minus 1 is larger or equal ui plus n xij. So what does this give us? If xij is 1, then this, I simply have n here. And here I have n minus 1. So this is the same as saying that uj larger or equal ui plus 1, because you can simply subtract n minus 1 on both sides. On the other hand, if xij is 0, then this whole term is gone. Then essentially I do not want to have a constraint, but then this constraint also doesn't tell us anything because it just says that uj plus n minus 1 is larger or equal to ui, so this is fulfilled always. So this is the so-called Miller 
Tucker uh, them then formulation. And then alternative formulation is a Danzig Balkers and Johnson formulation or sub tour elimination. And that works as follows. So now I simply look at all the subsets except for the full set and also at least containing two of the vertices. And I'm saying that if I look at the sum of the xij, that should be smaller equal the number of elements minus one. And as a consequence, if you would be looking at something like this, where I have a small cycle and another small cycle, if your subset q, so q, this is now numbers from one to n, but this is, I have labeled my vertices one to n, so this is a subset of the vertices that I'm referring to. So if I take this as a subset, then the number of edges here, so the xij that I've picked, is four and the number of vertices is also four, so this would violate this constraint. So within those four vertices, I would only be allowed to have three edges that are completely in the set, so there would have to be at least one that now goes out, and this way I could break those smaller cycles. So this is um, the more commonly used uh, formulation and this is called sub tour elimination because I can um, eliminate, eliminate sub tours using these um, extra constraints. So, as you see, this is a very large number of constraints. So, I take all of the subsets. So, what I would do is I wouldn't add all of those at once, but I would solve the problem without those constraints in. And then if I get a solution and it violates a constraint, which I can easily see because I get smaller cycles, then I would put in exactly the constraints that break those smaller cycles, solve it again, and do that as long as necessary to get a solution that actually is a TSP tool. Finally, I want to talk about techniques for solving integer linear programs. This is just a very brief overview to give you some impression of how this works. So the general idea is always to use LP relaxation, but the problem is that the solution to our LP might be far away from the optimal solution to the ILP. And then we have to somehow continue to find a better solution and the techniques most commonly used are branch and bound, cutting planes, and the combination of the two, branch and cut. So what is branch and bound? So this is a general technique, not only for ILPs, and the idea is as follows. So I'm going to decompose my problem into two problems um, and solve those subproblems. And this might work recursively. And uh, but while I'm doing so, I can keep also track of upper and lower bounds of where my optimal solution might lie. And then if uh, for a subproblem it falls outside of those bounds, then I can discard the subproblem. So let's see how this looks like for ILPs. Let's say I've solved the LP relaxation. I got a solution and it has non-integer components like say this xi. Now what I can do, so let's say xi has a value of alpha i, then I will round down to the next integer and round up to the next integer. In between there cannot be any solutions to the integer linear program of course. So I can solve the smaller equal alpha i rounded down and larger equal alpha i rounded up separately. And so this looks like that. Now I have two ILPs, the one for smaller equal. So this was, in this case, it was between one and two. So smaller equal one and larger equal two. So for the larger equal two, now I get an integer solution. And then for that sub problem I'm done, I can update the opt to being this value. And now I just need to see whether the other subproblem gives me a better opt. So here now, let's say this is now the solution that I get from the LP. It's again not integer. Then in this case, I can um, subdivide based on x2. So I'm going to solve the problem x2 smaller equal, in this case, 3, and larger equal 4. Uh, and I will get solutions that are worse than the solution that I already found. 
and then I am done. So generally, while branching, I have three possibilities for the subproblems. So either I end up with an infeasible LP, then I can simply discard the branch, or I get an integer solution, then I update the opt, and I'm also done with the branch. Um, or I get a solution that is non-integer, then I stop if the solution that I have is worse than the opt that I already found, otherwise I need to branch. So that's branch and bound. Cutting planes is a, a such very simple concept. And if I have the LP relaxation and I have a non-integer solution, then I will be looking for a cutting plane. So essentially yet another uh, constraint which has the solution that was found on one side and all the integers that are feasible on the other side. So this is an example. Um, and then I add that as a constraint and continue. And there are cutting planes such that you can guarantee that eventually you will end up with an optimal solution in this way. And there are two types of cuts. So there are general purpose cuts. And I'm not going to say more about that now, but the best known ones are the Gombrel cuts. So also if you use an IRP solver, it will do cuts like this to find an optimal solution for you. And there are also problem specific cuts. What is commonly used is branch and bound or cutting planes or the combination of both branch and cut. So what we've seen is IRPs and LP in one case, formulations for shortest pass and the traveling salesperson problem and a brief overview of techniques of for solving ILPs.